Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How is everybody? Great. I hope you're all seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I think some of you are going to be over as soon as a couple of weeks from now. All right. Well, hello from Great Link World Headquarters in uh, cloudy Southern California. <laughs> we <laughs> This is very typical May for us. So we, we call it May Gray. <laughs> and if it extends into June, we call it June Gloom. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. This is the first part of a part two webinar on how to close out this year and get yourself ready for next. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, switch the view to grade link. And hopefully everybody's keeping calm because school is almost over. <laughs> okay. As a teacher or as an administrator, it's extremely important, I can't stress this enough, for your report cards to look correct. You need to conclude the classes. That's an absolutely vital step. There's two ways of doing it, actually three ways. If you're a teacher, and let me go into a teacher's page. Now, this is the page for Candace B. Rittenoff, who is our accounting teacher. So this is the grade sheet. There's the, uh, there's the final grade. The conclude button is right here. So once the teacher has finished with everything, finished grading assignments, finished entering assignments onto the grade sheet, it's extremely important that that teacher conclude the class. And uh, the teacher does so by clicking here on conclude. And they're about to conclude a class. And then once the, once the class is concluded, the class becomes part of the permanent record. A grade link does recommend that you either convert the grade sheet into a PDF and save it that way or print it and save it. Because after roughly 400 days or so, the grade sheets get erased. The final grades do not. The final grades are permanent and they will be there five, ten years from now. But the grade sheets do get erased. So if there's any reason you need to hang on to the grade sheet, be sure to print it and keep a copy of it. Click on Conclude. You will get one final option to back out. Click on OK. And the class is now concluded. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody's line so that it cuts out a little bit on the background noise. I'll unmute it and give you an opportunity for questions in a little bit. Okay, so class, that's one way to conclude a class. As a teacher, this is how you do it. As an administrator, you have two choices. I'm going to go back to administrator grade link. Click on the classes button over here to the left. And then you can either choose the class individually, and you know classes are concluded because they've turned purple and have two stars in front of them. So you can click on an individual class and then click on the Conclude button down at the bottom of this left-hand side. Again, you'll be asked if this is really what you want to do. Click OK, and the class now shows as concluded. That's the second one. If your school requires all grades to be in by a certain point, and you want to conclude all classes at the same time, GradeLink will let you do that as well. You can do that by clicking on Terms. Click on the term that you would like to conclude. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and conclude the fourth quarter. And then there's a Conclude button right here. Click on the Conclude button. 
Again, it asks you if that's what you really want to do because you're going to conclude every single class. Click on OK. And you'll get a working please wait notice as the classes are concluded. Come over to classes. Now you can see the fourth quarter is now all concluded. Important thing to keep in mind, once a class is concluded, a teacher can no longer make changes to it. If something needs to be changed, the teacher will have to go to an administrator, and the administrator would then have to unconclude the class. So to unconclude a class, click on the name of the class, and there'll be an unconclude button over at the bottom on the, on the left-hand side of the screen. Click on the unconclude button. OK it, and now the class is unconcluded and changes can be made. If you unconclude an entire term and find you need, or you, rather you conclude an entire term, and you find you need to unconclude the term, um, you won't be able to do that, but give us a call at support or send us an email at support, I'm sorry, at service at gradelink.com or give us a call, we will be able to unconclude your entire term for you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open up the mics again. And uh, do you have any questions about the process of concluding or unconcluding classes? No. No, I'm okay. good. I, all right. I have a question. I'm sorry. Yes. No, it's um, all right. We use grade link. I'm sorry, this is um, Allie. I'm calling from Rochester, New York. We use um, GradeLink mainly for attendance. So how, how does that re concluding the um, term relate to our attendance? So all the attendance would still be there for the records prior yes. to the year prior. So nothing changed. I can still go in and pull a kid's atten a child's attendance from that term if it's yes, concluded. That's okay? Yes. Okay, I want to make sure nothing gets lost. Okay. Yeah, the and attendance classes open, don't go away. Yeah. Okay. Um, in order to open a new term, everything must be concluded from the year prior. Is that correct? That's not correct. Actually, you can open up okay. a new term at any point. You don't necessarily okay. need to conclude your prior term to go to a new one. Okay. In fact, okay. you can have both terms active at the same time. Okay. It, it, it can be a little confusing, but it's it's certainly possible. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? It seems to me I remember a button that said conclude all. Am I, is that a false memory? Well, it's not exactly, it doesn't say conclude all. If you're talking about terms here, there is this conclude button that will conclude every class in whatever term you've highlighted. Uh-huh. But okay. that's probably the closest thing we have to a conclude all button. Okay, that's, that's probably it. Thanks. Like I say, when you conclude all, um, and you find you need to unconclude everything, unconcluding class by class by class is going to take you forever. Oh, okay. So just give us a call. We can get you get an entire term unconcluded in five minutes or less. Okay. Um, amending attendance. This is extremely easy. You start here with attendance. I'm going to go ahead and mute the phones here. Okay, so as far as attendance. I'm going to go ahead and select today, and I'm going to go to the attendance class.
oh, that's interesting. It seems to be st- oh, okay. I know why. It's because I've I've concluded it. Brilliant. Okay, let's unconclude attendance. There we go. So we have the attendance. Attendance will always when you when you go to the attendance button, it will usually default to the current date. So if I find I need to change attendance from a previous day, I just change the date here. I'm going to go back to the 4th of April, and it turns out that uh, uh, Euripides' pants was actually absent this day. So I just go ahead and make the change. Click on Save Changes. It's recommended if you do need to make changes to an attendance class that has been concluded, we suggest you go ahead and unconclude it to make the change. And then after you make the change, be sure to go back to your classes and reconclude it. If you need to access attendance from prior terms, Up at the top center, there's this blue clock icon, and it has the word current right above it. Click either on the clock or in the box right next to it. Either one will work. And you want that clock to turn purple, and there to be a check in this box. This will give you access to classes in previous quarters. So here's the attendance sheet, or the attendance five for quarter three. Clicking on the clock icon to turn it blue again will take you back to the current term. Think of this as kind of like a time machine. When you want to see classes in past terms, you want to click on this. Turn it purple, and you'll be able to go back to previous quarters. In this case, it's back to quarter four of last school year. Okay, let me go ahead and unmute everybody. Okay, can I answer any questions about uh, amending attendance? Okay. If a parent is questioning the attendance of a child and we need to be able to the late, is there a report that would just just for that child? Like with all An attendance? Days? An attendance history for a particular student? Yes. Absolutely. What you want to do is click here where it says Attend uh, Administrator Reports. And then you want to click on the Custom Attendance Report button. You're going to get a list of all of your students. Up at the top, you can select the terms that you want covered on that report. So in this case, I'm going to uh, include just the four terms from the current school year. Or if you prefer, you can specify a range of dates. On the report, you can determine which attendance values you'd like shown just by putting a check mark next to it. And then click on the name of the individual student. And then down below, you will get an attendance history for that student. Clicking on the print button, we'll go ahead and print that report. This is also kind of nice if you need a really quick way to determine who has perfect attendance. Because if you click here on where it says show perfect attendance only, you're going to get a list of students who have never been marked absent. Is the administrator report just for administrators? If you're a teacher, do you do this in a teacher's report? There isn't a corresponding report for teachers. This is a, an administrator. See, in, in, uh, in great, can you do it in teachers? I usually do it in teacher report, and I didn't know if you still had that. I usually do um, teacher report and then attendance conduct by student. 
Oh, okay. In that first column. Oh, I usually sure. do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll work I as well. Down. Okay. And then submit. Mm -hmm. You just hit submit, I think. And, and then, then yeah, then it, then it gives you for the student, right? You have a drop down list for all your students. Yeah, that would also work, sure. Okay. I have a quick is question. Is the administrative report just for administrators, though? It is just for administrators, okay. yes. Okay, the so custom the teacher, attendance if report. A teacher, uh, yeah, okay, so if a teacher clicks in, they don't see that tab, is that right? That's right. Okay. Okay, I have another question? Teachers. Yes, I have teachers that mark attendance in a different way when the child comes in tardy. Do they mark initially absent, change it to tardy and leave it at that, or is it tardy and present? And how does it come out on the report card? Okay. The attendance sheet should um, get it back to it here. I beg your pardon, I'm selecting the wrong way. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, if a student is marked absent, and it turns out, in fact, the student is not absent but tardy, you do want to go ahead and mark present as well as tardy. So, both are so marked. Yes. Yeah. But, um, right, that way they get present. On the report card, it would show as a tardy, but it would also show that they were present that day. Gotcha. All right. That's what I wanted to do. Um, the changes, there There are some schools that have a certain number of tardies equal an absence. We don't have that. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, it's a good idea for your teacher to mark the student both present and tardy if that kind of a change is made. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Let's go ahead and proceed to report cards. So we're going to assume that your classes are all concluded. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude these last two. Okay, and then we go to administrator reports. And then click on your report card. I'm going to go to a different school. I have a black screen. Now you select, go ahead. I have a black screen. Huh. Um, anybody else? Um, no. I'm monitoring it. It's okay. Um, uh, can you try just reconnecting? If it doesn't come back up, uh, try going back to uh, join me slash grade link. Yeah, no, I'm good. It just and came up. It just delayed a little okay. bit. Okay. Okay, super. Whew, okay, heart attack prevented. <laughs> okay, so we start first. When you, when you produce your report card, you want to determine which terms do you want shown on the report card. And this is determined by several things. First of all, it makes a difference depending on which report card format you use, and whether or not you have semesters versus trimesters or semesters with quarters and so forth. Some report cards are limited to the number of columns they can display. So I'm going to start off just by highlighting the quarters. Next step is your display mode. For the final report card that you're going to either print or publish online or, or send home with the student, you want to be sure and use the normal mode as opposed to preview. Preview adds a watermark that says it's a preview. You want to be sure you select the normal or conclude it. Then you have your choice. You can run your report cards for an entire grade level. or for a particular class, 
or for a an individual. Now, if you have multiple profiles, you want to be sure you select the correct profile. Uh, for some of you, you just have a single general profile for the whole school. For others, um, you may have a different profile for each grade. So in this case, since this is a seventh grade student, I'm going to use the seventh and eighth grade profile. Click on Submit. And the report card displays. For this particular report card, it's um, printed on two sides of an 8.5 by 11 page and then folded down the center. Another report card format is what we call our multi-term format. I'll show you what that looks like. Use a multi-term report card format. This time I'm going to go ahead and leave everything highlighted because a multi-term will include all these different terms. Select the same individual and submit. So here you have quarter one, two, midterm, semester two, quarter three, quarter four, should be semester two and final. I'm going to have to adjust the dates on that. So that's how you produce report cards. Now, there are a few adjustments you can make to these, what we call report card options. So I'm going to go back to the setup screen. Right here, where it says report card options, you want to first select an individual and then select the appropriate report profile. Click on report card options. And there are a number of things you can include. For example, if you want to include numbered comments on the report card, you would put a check in the box. If you want to show the percentage grade as opposed to the letter grade, click here. Showing the teacher name would give you the teacher's name after each class. If you take attendance by class as opposed to taking it just daily, you can show class attendance on the report card by clicking here on show class attendance. Once you've set these, click on the save profile settings button. And then when you produce the report card, these changes will take place. Okay, and then finally, uh, there are a lot of schools who also like to make the report card available to parents online. That's a very simple thing to do. Um, it's a two-step process. First, you need to publish the report card. And you do that by clicking here on the Publish Online button. Click on it. Telling you that it's, they're going to be published online. Click on Continue. Okay, this tells you that you published the report card. The next step, now that you published it, you need to make it possible for your parents to see it when they log in. And to do that, you come over here to Settings. Click on Settings. When you click on Settings, it always defaults to the Parent View. And the key is right up here in the upper right where it says Published Report Cards. You want to be sure there's a check in that box. When the box is checked, your parents will be able to see the report card. The way it would work is the parent or student simply logs in to GradeLink. Goes to the grades page. That's the key. You want to be sure you click on the, the parent clicks on the grade page. And then here's the PDF for the report card. Parent clicks on it. It downloads it as a PDF.
And let me go ahead and change the views to let you see it. So there's the report card for the parent. The parent can then print it if they wish. Okay, if you only want report cards viewable for a particular period of time, once you remove this published report cards check and then click on save changes, now when the parent logs in, goes to the grades page, that report card button is no longer there. So you control when and for how long parents can access that report card. The key is in settings, making sure that the published report card button is checked. I have a quick question. Sure. One of the one of the reasons we print them was so that you know they go home, they get signed, and, and mm -hmm. they come back to us. Is there any right. way to verify whether the parents have seen this, or is it just totally up to them? It's their no. Home. There is a method. That, that's a great question. And yes, you okay. can verify. What you do is go to administrator reports, just like you're going to run the report card. Okay. Click on the report card. And then over here to the right of report card options, do you see where it says view published report cards? Uh -huh. Click on that. Remember the report card we ran was for Susan Anthony. So if you look over here to the right, it will tell you when that report card was viewed. Okay. You know, some schools like to do both. They like to have it available online for the parent to view, but they also want that signed copy as proof that the parent does know of its existence. So, but uh, you can do either or both. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, and then um, students. Students have a funny way of expecting to be promoted to the next year at the end of the current one. <laughs> that, that's, that, seems to, uh, that seems to be kind of a universal thing among students. They want to go to that next grade. <laughs> so, GradeLink makes it really easy for you to do this. So, we're in GradeLink right now. We'll go to Students. And then in students, up at the upper right, you'll see an admin button. So you want to click on that admin button. And then over to the left, the fourth button from the left says promote. We'll click on that promote button. So first of all, you want to be sure everything's concluded and your report cards have been printed. So you don't want to promote your students until all of this is done. Next, if you have the unfortunate student who is not going to go on to the next grade, you can identify that student ahead of time. So we'll assume that uh, Orson around here is not going to become a senior next year. But we'll put a check next to his name. So if you look here, Orson around is currently in grade 11. So once you've identified your students who are going to be held back, the next step is to click here on the Promote Students button. Once you do that, everybody goes up one grade. So here we go. And you see how everybody who's been promoted turns green. The exception is Orson Around, who um, 
who has lived up to his name and is not moving on. <laughs> okay, for those of you who use our Enroll Me online enrollment system, once you promote, you you can change the I, the uh, status, which uh, will most likely be re-enrollment if the parent has done their re-enrollment. You can go ahead and change that to active. If you don't use the Enroll Me system, don't worry about number four. And then finally, uh, we had some 12th grade students, specifically here, Teresa Crowd and Colette O'Day. And I go first, are all graduated. You'll see they're in grade 13. Yeah. So you want to now change their status to alumni. And to do this, select grade 13 from this drop down menu. Or if you're a K through 8 school, if you're a K through 8 school, you want to click on, on grade 9 and move them out. Then when you click on inactivate students, are you sure you want to? Yes. Let's get them out of here. Okay, your students are now inactivated. So anybody who was in 12th grade is now in 13th grade. If you come up here to students, now above the list of students where it says all active, select alumni, and here are your alumni. All done for you. Also, another nice thing about this, this automatically moving them into the alumni category, is you can still keep contact with them via mail. If you go here to communicate, which is GradeLink's email blast system, and you come here to where it says choose one or more groups, here's your alumni. Mm. So if you were to view all your individual, here are your alumni. So any email address you have on file for your alumni, you will still be able to use that to send them information. Or if they had a really good experience, hit them up during your annual campaign. Okay. Can I answer any questions about um, the promotion process? No, that's good. Just be sure you really are ready because once you do it, there's no turning back. <laughs> um, if, if you do mistakenly promote everybody before you want to, let us know. We can move everybody back a grade, although the programmers will probably give you a stern look. <laughs> Should we do this prior to printing report cards? Is that something that will show on the report card or no? No, we recommend that you don't do this until you're completely finished, and that would include printing report cards. Printing report cards. How about if I have a child, because we have a um, preschool program here, and they're not going to continue with their school, how would I remove them from the system? What you would do then is you would go to that student's individual record. And say, for example, uh, Sosumi already is not returning. You would click on it so that the demographic record comes up and change the status to inactive. Okay. And then click on the save button down below. That will, that will, will not erase the student from grade link entirely. But what it does is it, it changes the status to inactive and moves them to the inactive list. I have a question. Also, it disables. Go ahead. When a, I'm sorry. When a student is inactive, do you still have access to their attendance? Yes. Okay. You still have access to all their grades, all their attendance. Okay. Um, it's just that they're no longer on your list of active students because they're no longer attending your school. And from from a practical standpoint, that's important because remember, grade link fees are based on active students. So don't don't pay for students you don't have. As far as the 
wasn't the financial part of it, like the alumni are inactive if they have balances, we would still have access to that? Yes. Yes. Again, uh, when you click on financial, you still have your active, you still have your inactive. So yeah, you'll still have the uh, you'll still have any financial records for them. Okay. Speaking of financial, here's something a lot of schools will forget about. When you're in your billing and you reach your final billing period, don't forget to click here and indicate when you close your last billing period for your current session that any outstanding balances get automatically forwarded to your next session, in this case 2016-2017. This is a really easy thing to forget to do. And you want to be sure you do it only when you're closing your final billing period for the current session. Also, another little trick, in financial, if you go here to admin, oops, let's cancel this, go to admin, and then settings. Right here, if you click here, put a check in breakdown balance transfers by account categories. That can really help whoever does your bookkeeping, your accounting, because they'll know that so much of the, the balance transferred was for tuition and so much of it was for fees. And so it helps break down your balance transfers. Otherwise, the whole balance transfers in one lump sum. And you don't necessarily know whether it was for tuition or for fees or what it was for. Okay, can I answer any other questions? Yes, I have a quick question about the report Great. card. Sure. Uh, on, under the options, uh, doesn't it say something about, you know, that you could, you could, uh, check, um, uh, under the report card options, something about, um, uh, promotion? Yes. On the report yeah. card. Okay, right. is that linked at all to the promotion that you took us through? It is not. It is okay, not. that's completely separate. Um, it is. Okay. And let me uh, show you that. You are talking about show grade placement. Place. Yeah. Yeah. So when you want to do this is when you're running them for a group of students who are all going to be put into the same grade next year, you can then go ahead and select which grade they're going to go into. And no, that has absolutely nothing to do with the promote function in students. They're completely separate. Okay, so that when when the list shows the students, that grade still remains from what we had it listed. Right, because when you conclude the class, the record includes the grade of the student at the time they took that class. Gotcha. So even though they're promoted, the permanent record of the class has been created, so the grade is not going to change for the class. Yeah. Gotcha. Alrighty. Alrighty. Okay. Okay. Can I answer any other questions? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. You were going to say something else? No, no. That was good. Okay, great. Okay, no questions. Okay, uh, by means of advertisement, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, I'm going to do a webinar on showing you our sign-in, sign-out application. So if you run like a preschool or any other kind of organization where maybe an after-school program where you need to show that, that students have been signed in and signed out, Gradelink has an application that will make it very easy for you. And you can use it on a mobile device, on a tablet. As long as you have Wi-Fi service, you'll be able to use this app. So wow. uh, you're certainly welcome to join us tomorrow, um, 11 a.m. Pacific, and we'll go through it and show you how to set it up and how to use it. And Ooh. then one week from today, on May 11th, at 10 o'clock Pacific time, we'll do part two of wrapping up your school year and getting ready for the next. So we're going to 
go over uh, a couple of tricks, uh, show you how to um, use your transcripts, edit transcripts if you have to, and how you get set up for the following year so that your summer becomes very easy and you can finally take that two-month cruise to Europe. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> we can dream. Uh, yes, that's true. Hey, Tom, this is Laura <laughs> yes. in Sacramento. Hi. I was yeah. wondering, um, to get on tomorrow's um, webinar, just go ahead and click on the same link. Yes, the link should be the same. For the sign in, sign out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should be the same. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you for joining me, everybody. Have a thank terrific you. rest of the day. And remember, keep calm. School's almost over. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining Bye. me. Bye. Bye.